Okay, uh, we have uh, the reports here, and uh, you can learn more at WayneMadsonReport.com. I won't go over his whole bio. He's written for The Village Voice, Counterpunch, Corp Watch, Multinational Monitor, News Insider, These Times, American Conservative. His columns have appeared in the Miami Herald, Houston Chronicle, Philadelphia Inquirer, Atlanta Journal-Constitution, Sacramento Bay, Columbus Dispatch. Formerly worked with the Navy, then the NSA, then RCA. He's been everywhere, Al Jazeera, ABC, MSNBC. Uh, and uh, he also was one of the founding members of EPIC. He joined great defenders of free speech and liberty. Wayne Madsen has been to Tripoli on occasions. He's going to give us his inside take on what's really happening there and the rest of the world right now and, and how big this unauthorized war is, what it means to our Constitution. Wayne, thanks for joining us via video Skype. Hi, Alex. Good to be with you. Good to have you there, my friend. Uh, so break down the latest. I mean, you've been to Tripoli. You've covered it. What's happening? Okay. Well, I was over in Tripoli uh, on a dignity delegation that the uh, former representative Cynthia May put together. I had been with her in uh, October 2009, and she asked for journalists to go, go back uh, because she said, look, what's happening here is not being reported by the Western media. And sure enough... Uh, after we went from, uh, we flew to Milan and then to Tunis and then took a plane from Tunis to the island of Jerba, uh, right near the Libyan-Tunisian border, and then went by car uh, because of the air embargo, the Tripoli, uh, it was quite clear that we saw no current signs of rebel activity anywhere from the Tunisian border to Tripoli. Uh, the, as a matter of fact, we came across one Okay, Wayne, your your Probably video Skype was clear. Uh, Wayne, 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 your video Skype was clear. Now the audio's breaking up. Uh, while they just try to go audio only on Skype, if that doesn't work, we'll call you on phone. Uh, while we get this key intelligence, again, you've been there several times. You just returned from a trip there for folks that had trouble making that out. And this is a big deal. I mean, uh, even Democrats and Republicans are saying Obama is becoming an emperor and uh, saying the UN is his authority. He doesn't need Congress. Congress traitorously tried to give him authorization a few weeks ago, and Obama said, I don't need your stinking authorization. This isn't a war. It's humanitarian. The U.N. says so. And they got drones murdering whole families, bombing apartment buildings. I mean, it is on. And they are uh, just, uh, okay, Wayne, continue. So you just got back yep. from, from Tripoli. Break down what's happening. Right. There, there was no current sign of rebel activity anywhere from the Tunisian border all the way into Tripoli. Uh, there had been back in uh, when the rebellion first started in February, it looks like uh, the, the NATO countries may have inserted re uh, people in the area to cause problems, but we came across an impromptu pro Gaddafi demonstration on the main coastal highway from the Tunisian border into Tripoli. Once we got to Tripoli, life was normal, and this was not being reported by the media that's ensconced at the Rixos Hotel in downtown Tripoli. Life was normal except for the constant nightly NATO bombardments. The only planes you could hear, of course, in the air at night were NATO aircraft, and you knew when you heard them, get ready because the bombs are coming next. And sure enough, you'd, you'd uh, see the explosions and feel the rumble uh, if you were uh, outside at night, and you would also feel it as I did in the hotel room. I was on the on the tenth floor. You mean you would a, see the kinetic peace? When, yes, we would see the kinetic military action. They were constantly bombarding the Gaddafi military compound, which was about a, a kilometer and a mile from our hotel. Uh, this was where people were gathering every night, offering themselves as human shields. These were people, uh, men, women, kids uh, from all walks of life, going there after they got off from work, uh, uh, cheering Gaddafi. Uh, you know, uh, and we went as Americans and thinking, well, what kind of reception are we going to get? And, and to a person, they said, we love America, but you're pre Obama. We thought he was great. We're Africans. He's an African-American, but now he's bombing our country. Uh, what, what's wrong with him? And this was a constant question we were asked uh, by the people of Libya. There were even uh, 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 traffic policemen uh, out, out on the streets directing traffic who were not even armed. So the fact is that people like um, people like John Burns from the New York Times, uh, one of these war correspondents that goes from U.S. war to U.S. war and 
broadcast Pentagon propaganda, and Simon Denyer, formerly from Reuters and now with the Washington Post, basically broadcasting or, or writing from Tripoli uh, that, uh, you know, the city's under siege, uh, life is not normal, Gaddafi's on the ropes. None of this was true. This was rank propaganda uh, from these and other uh, journalists. So, uh, so it's like the Rough Riders charging a hill where no one was. It's like yeah. it's like Hearst publishing. You give me the photos, the the paintings, the illustrations. I'll give you the war. Or more recently, what you but you have the seen the Gaddafi forces running around naked with bottles of Viagra, though. No, yeah, yeah. Well, that's another one. You know, and and that was uh, not e that wasn't true. Uh, of course, here's another thing, and this gets some more serious issues there have been many people who originally went with the rebels who have now go, uh, tried to go back to Gaddafi because they say look of course we wanted a more open society but we did also didn't want a NATO invasion of our nation and they have tried to get back to Gaddafi and we've heard uh, these cases of NATO bombing rebels by mistake quote unquote by mistake it's quite clear from intelligence I picked up from people in Tripoli that some of these rebel uh, movements were rebels trying to get back to Tripoli to rejoin Gaddafi to, to fight with him against the NATO invasion. And that's why they were targeted by NATO. Tarpley uh, was on with us earlier, Webster Tarpley. He says also some of the rebel groups are calling in airstrikes on other rebel groups that they're fighting with uh, over power and that it's a type of high-tech fragging. Well, that's it. And, and the, the other thing that's uh, very disconcerting is there is an economic embargo against Western Libya. Uh, even fishing vessels can't go out to get their daily catch because they're interdicted by uh, NATO vessels. And that's uh, genocide right there, keeping folks from food. Right, and there's also the gas shortage. Uh, uh, the gas, there's long, long gas lines, some of them miles and miles long. Taxis have one, trucks have another for diesel, others. But here you have ambulances. We're bombing civilian residences. Uh, and, and there, you know, there's a shortage of gasoline even for ambulances. This is collective punishment. This is no different than the co collective punishment that we see Israel uh, uh, do against the people of Gaza. NATO's doing the same thing against the people of Western Libya. And, 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 and these people are, are innocent. They're caught in this civil war, this civil war that's basically being supported by NATO. And uh, I visited one man in a hospital who had been hit in the abdomen with shrapnel from a NATO bombing and he was a history uh, teacher, a high school history teacher and he knew a lot about American history and he said I don't understand why you're bombing our country. We never attacked you um, even with the nonsense that you know the US was uh, supposedly said that Libya was behind the blowing up of Pan Am 103 when there's ample evidence to show that it was Iran that did that and George H.W. Bush wanted to blame Gaddafi because he needed Iran to stay neutral because he had designs on invading Iraq in those days, Operation Desert Storm. So, they, the people of Libya are wondering why have you done? Why are you attacking us? We've never attacked you. And uh, what do and, they and, think of the statements by the governments that this isn't war? <clears throat> well, of course they know it's war now. After I left, I was there for a little over four days. Cynthia McKinney stayed even longer. And then after we left, of course, now they're bombarding during the day. So it's day and nighttime bombardment. And they're trying to basically wear the people down. Uh, all the PSYOP, all the information warfare going on. Uh, the one thing that wasn't reported at all in this country uh, was that the rebels are huge crooks. Remember Ahmed Chalabi and Iraqi National Congress? And now there's $18 billion lost that we kicked over to these Iraqi uh, anti-Saddam people. Well, we have the same thing playing out in Libya now. Uh, when the rebels took over Benghazi, they looted the central bank of Benghazi of $900 million, uh, 900 million in Libyan dinars in cash and $500.5 million in U.S. dollar currency. And now they want the Libyan assets unfrozen. Even people in our Treasury Department don't want to do that because they say, look, they've, they've siphoned off all this money out of the Libyan Central Bank. Now they want to steal more money, obviously, to put in their Swiss bank And account. we know that there's al-Qaeda commanding it, and we're yes. unpatriotic for saying don't give billions of dollars to al-Qaeda. Stay there. I want to get your take on the, uh, it's now admitted in Congress, they're getting ready for a ground invasion, late September, early October. You've been there repeatedly. What do you predict will happen 
uh, when the first Cav under three core goes in. Stay with us. We'll Continuing be right uh, here with Wayne Madsen. Wayne, w w you're there in D.C. You're covering all this. You're getting ready to leave the U.S. again. You've been to Tripoli. Uh, they're now admitting they're getting ready for U.S. slash British slash NATO peace force that will invade Tripoli. And they're, they're saying you will not resist us or it's terrorism. So now we're going to have the spectacle of heavy armor rolling and firing. And if you fire back, you're now a terrorist. I mean, this is this is total mind control. Well, that's right. And uh, what we do know is that uh, the Libyan government is distributing 1.3 million weapons to people in, in Western Libya. I spoke to one Libyan official who said, look, hey, we're, we have something really nice cooked up for the American troops when they arrive. They're really going to like what we're going to serve them. Obviously, uh, he's not talking about meals ready to eat. Um, so well, that guy's a terrorist. He should join yeah. al-Qaeda in, in the East and, and join the people that run America. He should thank them for the bombs killing children everywhere. And how dare him say that he would fight back against tanks with a gun. He's a coward. Right. And, and I'll tell you the other thing that's not being reported is the, the $1.3 billion stolen by Goldman Sachs from the Libyan Sovereign Wealth Fund. It's quite clear that this was part of an investigation being conducted by the Gaddafi government. The anti-corruption agency was looking at the siphoning off of billions of dollars from Libyan oil revenue by certain government ministers. And isn't it funny? Almost to a person, these are the very ministers who defected to the rebels, heralded, oh, they've, they're quitting Gaddafi, going to the other side. They, were going, they went to the other side because they were about ready to be indicted and they were going to go on trial for, for fraud and, and siphoning off that money. And it's it's thought that when Saif Gaddafi, Gaddafi's son, said, look, we bankrolled Sarkozy's 2007 presidential campaign in France, that some of that money from Goldman Sachs may have been the money that wound up. In well, of course, Sarkozy's he made a deal with them. It's in mainstream news. They stole tens of billion. But again, Wayne, you want me to believe Goldman Sachs would double cross somebody? That is how Goldman Sachs <laughs> are good people. Oh, yeah. And, and the other thing, isn't it funny? It's Sarkozy who was the first to go after Libya. He was the first to recognize the rebels. Obviously, the, the, the first target of the NATO aircraft happened to be the anti-corruption agency in Tripoli that had all the files well, on all this missing money. Well, we all know our government's good. That wouldn't be happening. Come on, they're, they're, they're fighting. They're fighting to give freedom to al-Qaeda, man. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, I, I wish we saw the video because I also we went to the uh, the bombed out residence of Gaddafi's son and I picked up a piece of rubble. I'm going to try to have this uh, tested for um, depleted uranium, but it's quite clear that NATO said that was a military target. Well, it happened. I, the only thing I saw uh, in, the, in the compound, there was a petting zoo where Muammar Gaddafi was feeding the animals when they hit the main, uh, the main structure. That's the only reason he survived. So they were trying to kill him. I saw, I picked up this piece of rubble next to the first lady of Libya's handbag and a shoe. How would somebody like to go to Camp David and find the singed uh, handbag and shoe of the first lady, Michelle Obama? Well, that handbag is actually a proton bomb. And those camels and rabbits or whatever they had are actually have big vampiric fangs like in the, the Monty Python Holy Grail, the deadly rabbit that did. I mean, the, that rabbit can attack tanks. Well, the global banking cartel that sees Europe and the United States is mopping up sovereign nations they don't control. And they're racing to openly get U.S., British, and other uh, NATO ground forces on the ground for the non-military action. Uh, which is now admittedly uh, being set up. That's in the news yesterday and today. The British, the U.S. are saying, yeah, we're going to invade and be on the ground, but it's not going to be, you know, on the ground uh, military action, even though there's already uh, reportedly U.S. troops, too, that have been killed, mercenaries dying, videos of them directing artillery. It's on. And they're racing to go ahead and get the full war going because then a lot of people will still say, well, got to support the troops. Well, how about you support them by not putting them in illegal wars? You know, if you were in Nazi Germany in 1939, uh, it would be supporting the troops to not go along with invading Poland. But America's going to end up being known like Nazi Germany. And uh, let it be on record that I spoke out against this and I was against this and having the UN tell the president what to do so Sarkozy and others can bag all the, that cash they stole from the Libyans. But um, 
continuing here. They've already double-crossed their old dictator, Mubarak. Now they're going after Gaddafi, made deals with them. What signal does this send to other leaders around the world uh, about playing footsie with the New World Order, Wayne? Well, let's look what happened just in Tehran the last few days. We had an anti-terrorism summit in Iran attended by Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. And who shows up? President Talibani of Iraq, President Karzai of Afghanistan, and President Zardari of Pakistan, all supposedly U.S. allies, going to hear people in Iran say the United States is a terrorist nation. So what does that do? It was, uh, all of our supposed allies are running away from us. They say, hey, you know, we, we got we to gotta throw in our lot with Iran and the other countries and build up a coalition, uh, an, an axis of uh, intelligence against And the an Saudis have run to the stupidity. Russians and so have the Pakistanis right. to, the, to the Chinese. Absolutely. And, and, and the, 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 other, the other thing is, uh, I've got up on my website, my homepage today, uh, 1998 uh, Libyan request for an Interpol red notice arrest warrant against Osama bin Laden. Uh, it was granted. Uh, there was an arrest. Now, today, the International Criminal Court has issued an arrest warrant for Muammar Gaddafi. The International Criminal Court never issued one of those for Osama bin Laden, ever in its existence since 2002, because... Uh, I think the reason they had to stage this phony death of bin Laden was what if Gaddafi's captured, put on trial in the Hague and says, well, I want to call bin Laden as a witness because I was the first world leader to put in a arrest warrant against this guy because the British and, 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 and mil uh, it, it military intelligence and CIA were using oh, uh, bin Laden to try to kill me, Muammar Gaddafi. Wouldn't that have been embarrassing? So dead men don't tell no tales. They had to they had to uh, officially declare bin Laden dead with that phony. Uh, 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 well, it's very un-American for you to talk bad about bin Laden now that there are main allies fighting Gaddafi. I mean, <laughs> next George That's Washington's going to be a bad guy. You're some kind of sicko. Now, so am I, I guess, because I think this is a war and the government says it's not. So let's not be conspiracy theorists. Wayne Madsen of the WayneMadsenReport.com. In closing, uh, do you think overall, I mean, NATO can't back off now. Do you think the ground invasion's on? Well, what we already see the Italians wanting to leave the coalition. They want to cease fire. I think I think what we're going to see is NATO's going to is, is the coalition's going to fray. And uh, if if anybody goes in, guess who it's going to be? It's going to be U.S., maybe French and British ground troops, and and that's going to be it. And what do you predict? You've been there many times. What do you predict is going to happen to those troops? A bloodbath. Uh, if I were if I were uh, able to invest money, I would be investing money in uh, companies that sell coffins and body bags to the Pentagon. Yeah, because the North Africans will fight like the devil. Absolutely, absolutely. And 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 1.3 million armed Libyans, including the Home Guard, uh, women, they're all going to go out and uh, and welcome the Americans with uh, with uh, AK-47s. Well, I mean, look, I'm pro-U.S., so I'm with Al-Qaeda now, and I'm a, just get, get, get Gaddafi. Get him, get him. Okay, right. Wayne, yeah. it's wrong to talk bad. Al-Qaeda's now our friend, okay? Right. Obama said so. Wayne Madsen. That's why they're changing their name. Yes, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us.